Hi everyone and welcome back to the Stanford IR video lecture series. Since drainage tubes are so commonly used in IR, I wanted to do a small video demonstrating how to prepare and use a drainage catheter. Drainage tubes have a variety of uses including nephrostomy placement such as that which drains the kidney, abscess or hematoma drainage, and biliary drainage to name a few. Here's a video on how to prepare and use a drainage catheter. So this is an example of a multi-purpose drainage catheters, such as that which you would put in like an abscess collection, a pleural effusion, or any fluid collection that you might be draining from the body. This is the end that's outside the body. So you'll see right here, this is where you'll hook up the drainage bag. And then down here at the end, you'll see measurements along the tube. And then here, this is the curved pigtail. And if you look on this, there's multiple side holes here through which um, stuff can either be injected into the tube or stuff can be aspirated out of the tube. This suture here at the end, if you pull this black suture, this will curve the pigtail once it's in the collection. So you'll see if I grab this and I look down here, you'll see this little suture on the end. And then if I try to pull this with one hand, you'll see it pulls on it and it'll pigtail the catheter when it's in the collection. So if you're in a case and they're going to place a drainage catheter, you'll open up the set and it'll have a couple of things. It'll have the drainage catheter, which is this green part, and then it'll have two of these stiffeners. One is this plastic stiffener here, which is very light, flexible, and plastic. And the other is this more metal stiffener here, which is a little more rigid, heavy, and metal. And then depending on what you're going through, whether it's a new tract or an old tract, this is something you should confirm with your attending or fellow, you'll take one of these and place them through the end of the catheter as such. So you go ahead and place the metal in here and then just push it through and have it come all the way down to the end and then secure it here on the back end. Go ahead and just tighten that and then it'll be ready to go. And then once this is placed inside, again this is something that you'll talk to your attending or your fellow, but once you get the tip in a good location, you're going to go ahead and release this. So the stiffener will help the initial part of the procedure to get the catheter to the right area. Then you'll release this, you'll hold this with one hand and you'll continue to thread the rest of the catheter further into the collection. And as you see, as it comes off, it'll start to form the curve. And then you'll keep advancing. You'll maintain this in the same position so that you're not forwarding the metal stiffener because you can cause trauma to adjacent organs with that. And then you'll keep advancing this inside. You'll eventually have this out. This will be in the collection and then you'll pigtail it here. All right, so we're going to move on to discussing holding pressure. This may seem straightforward enough, but there's actually a technique to holding pressure. When a closure device fails, someone, which is usually the lowest ranking person in the room, will need to hold pressure at the end of the case. The first thing you want to do is get the patient comfortable and let them know what you are about to do so that they can get into a position which will allow them to remain still. If needed, lidocaine can be used at the access site to help them with pain. The second thing you want to do is remove all sponges, towels, and drapes so that any abnormal bleeding is not obscured while you are holding pressure. All right, the next important thing you want to remember is that the skin entrance site is not the actual vascular puncture site. If you recall, when you make the initial puncture, the tip of the needle is facing in a superior direction. 
So if you look at the diagram on the right, this shows a catheter going through the skin into a vessel. The circle in red is where the catheter goes through the skin, and this is what you see when you look at the groin. But then the catheter heads in a deeper location and a slightly more superior direction to actually puncture the artery. So when you remove the sheath or the catheter, you want to hold pressure with your middle finger and then also your index finger just above the actual area where the sheath or catheter enters the skin so that you are holding pressure at the arterial access site. Once you do this, make sure you're not stopping the pulse with your pressure. You want to apply moderate pressure for 10 minutes and then reduce pressure for the last 5 minutes. If the patient continues to bleed, you want to repeat this, applying moderate pressure for 5 minutes and then excuse me, moderate pressure for 10 minutes and then reduce pressure for the last 5 minutes. Once bleeding stops, palpate all distal pulses to make sure that they are stable compared to baseline. As a point of interesting trivia, the figure to the right is actually taken from the original paper by Sven Ivar Seldinger. This paper was written in 1953. You're going to want to know your trivia when you have cases with Dan Z because he's going to pimp you. All right, everyone, thanks for making it to the end. You might notice that I didn't review one important thing that you need in IR, and this is not time. I didn't review this because there are so many good not time videos already available on YouTube, and I'm sure that you can find these pretty easily. Just remember, the other things that I reviewed in this video can be difficult to grasp in just one sitting. That's why this video is available for further review. Something that I found to be helpful is take a piece of equipment that you're not comfortable with, such as Kelly's or needle drivers or a wire, preferably one that's clean at the end of the case, and then play with it during the day between cases or when you're on consult. And then the next time you're in a case, you'll notice that you'll have a much easier time using this piece of equipment. All right, I hope after watching this, you guys are much more comfortable in the angio suite using the tools of interventional radiologists.